an event driven, uh, any logic is an event driven system. It's a system where the, the very operation of the package depends on, on a scheduling a set of events and processing those events over time. Uh, so we have a, um, a situation where this notion of an event, a sort of uh, incident that occurs at a particular point in time, um, is quite critical to the functioning of, of any logic. I'm, uh, Neil, I'm having trouble uh, getting these up here, so give me a, a second again. And um, I think this is, this is better now. Okay. Um, so um, in stimulating stocks and flow models, what we saw earlier, whoa, okay, I've got to get this up on the main screen here. Um, simulating stocks and flow models uh, earlier, we noted that there was a, um, the model was simulated using what's called numerical integration. So um, the, sim uh, the package essentially evaluated the values of, of uh, flows within the model. And on the basis of those values of flows, it would update the values of stocks and then advance in time. And then um, subsequently, the, um, uh, the stocks the flows would be evaluated for the next time step and it would advance in time. And this sort of integration can occur in a number of different ways. And um, there's whole classes to be had here on campus on um, detailed ways in which stocks and flows in their, their uh, mathematical analogs of uh, ordinary differential equations can be simulated efficiently. It turns out that there's uh, enormous benefits to be reaped by not needing to simulate them with any more level of temporal detail and without um, there's no that by choosing your time steps and your your methodology for simulating them for going forward step by step cleverly you can greatly reduce the amount of computational resources that are required to simulate a set of stocks and flows in ordinary differential equations and there's some quite advanced techniques that Rely that move beyond fixed size time steps and that in fact uh, rely on variable size si time steps that are supported in Bensim and ma many other packages. But at a conceptual level, we can think of time as going forward in a, in a continuum, but step by step by step, um, we're, we're simulating, we're updating our, our understanding of what the flows are. Based on that, we update our, the values of the stocks for the next time step. Now, this is quite different from the situation we see within agent-based modeling and within any logic more generally for discrete event modeling as well. Any logic jumps from event to event. The fundamental unit here is, is events. There's no fixed time steps unless you request that within the package. And you can tell the package, please use fixed time steps. Um, and in fact, if you go to um, to the model simulation side, what you'll see is that there's, uh, there's options for doing that. So uh, if we go down to a model such as the one we were working on last time, and, and we go down to simulation, and you go look at, at uh, uh, some options here, you'll notice that uh, the model time indicates the, the start time and the end time of the model. Um, it allows you to, to specify it uh, according to a calendar and so on. But you can furthermore uh, dictate whether you'd like to, to use uh, time steps within this model. And so, for example, um, within the simulation in the advanced tab, you can specify information about the, uh, how differential equations are to be simulated within any logic and the amount of tolerance you'd like to bring to the table. <coughs> More than that, <coughs> within, within your model, you can request that uh, time take place in time steps uh, uh, that, are, that are regular um, in, in their duration. And this can be done uh, within a model at, at a point associated, I believe it was with the simulation. I'm actually having trouble finding it here, um, but uh, you can say enable enable time steps, 
and that will actually force it to, um, to occur according to a set of steps. Um, I think we'll have to come back to that one once I, uh, once I locate this. Right. Um, so most fundamentally, though, any logic jumps from event to event. And there's a data structure called the schedule that keeps track of the events to be simulated. And events get added to the schedule. Uh, for example, when one agent sends a message to the other, an event gets added to the schedule. When you enter a state, a given state in a state chart, and there's several outflows, those get scheduled and added to the schedule. And, and events get removed from the schedule when they get preempted by another event. So for example, if, if you enter a state and you schedule the outflow from that state to be exactly some time out in the future, say 10 time units in the future, that may get scheduled. But then if an event arrives, you may go out via another route and that original event gets removed from the schedule and it no longer gets handled. So there's quite a involved process in maintaining the schedule. And there's something called the scheduler that takes care of, of that, um, that logic. So, um, excuse me here. Uh, so within our model, um, we have uh, this use of events, and the events are quite central to the operation of, of any logic. There's a set of, uh, beyond this, uh, a set of ways in which those events can be handled within any logic. So you may have seen, as we've uh, perused these models, that there's a variety of places where any logic provides opportunities for you to so-called handle an event. So when an event occurs, something is triggered by that event, some action is triggered. And there's a wide variety of events that, that we can handle in this way. We've seen transitions last time, uh, fixed rate transitions, timeout condition, uh, timeout uh, transitions, uh, conditions, etc. And if we go to that model that we saw last time and that we were building up, you may recall that if we clicked on a transition, what we could see is in fact a place where we could put in an action and this action would be triggered by that transition. When that transition occurs, this action will take place. There's often a place to specify a guard, which will specify whether, whether or not this, this uh, transition will actually fire, under what conditions it will fire. And you may specify certain restrictive conditions on that. There's also events associated with starting a model and stopping a model. If, again, if we go to any logic, um, and we click on main, for example, and you go uh, look at the general tab of the properties for main, you'll see there's some startup code. We took advantage of that last time so that the environment would deliver a message to an arbitrary person in the population. There's also some destroy code. These bits of code are triggered by, act by events. The, the startup event associated with a model and the destroy event associated with a model. Similar types of startup um, code can be inserted for agents. So for example, if we click on person, there's startup code and destroy code for an agent. And what that means is as each agent comes into existence, there's certain things that you can trigger to happen. When the agent leaves existence, there's, there's, um, there's some cleanup that you can do. So I term these implicit events because we don't represent them explicitly. We don't reify them and in some sort of explicit way within the model in a way that we can look at it and, and see that, okay, that event will be occurring. We, d we can't set the properties of those events. They're just kind of built into the infrastructure. But we can handle them. We can handle them by inserting code. Um, so we saw some examples. Uh, examples of this just now. Um, and behind the scenes here, the schedule is keeping track of queued events. Events get added to the schedule and events get deleted from the schedule as they fire off and are complete or if another event um, um, preempts them. But I'd like now to talk, move beyond in implicit events, which are very powerful, and talk about explicit events. These are events that you represent as such. That is, you represent them using objects within your model. So any logic provides two ways of doing this. One is with an event object, another is with a dynamic event object. 
And we're going to talk about each of these. Um, the salient distinction is that regular events occur over time, but with a fix with a schedule that's that's only one per event. So if you can have an event that triggers, for example, that um, now is the time to summarize the monthly data, and and it hits the end of the month and it summarizes some data and sticks it in a database or it writes it out to a file. Another event that might occur regularly might be associated with um, uh, some holiday and so you know periodically there's a certain holiday and so it fires off on that holiday. Um, there might be another event associated with reporting to the user or perhaps checking some condition. So these would be examples of regular events. Dynamic events are different in the sense that each event, each dynamic event can have multiple instances of it. And we'll, we'll, we'll give an, some examples of this, but each instance can be scheduled at different times, and you can have an arbitrary number of these instances. And these instances disappear after that event fires. By contrast, the original event will stick around throughout the duration of the model. You can disable it, but it'll stick around at some level. Um, okay, so um, I think I'll come back to this, but let's um, let's talk about scheduling uh, of events. So if we go and we look at any logic now, and I'm going to have to ask Neil's pardon here and any other remote people, but I'm going to go to that model we built last time, the minimalist network ABM model, and I'm going to click on main, double click on main, and you'll notice um, to the right, uh, in the palette, if you go up to the general tab, there's a, an event there. And you could drag that into main. And we could call this event report population. Okay. So this event is going to go off periodically and it's going to serve a reporting purpose. It's going to report on the population. And specifically report on the size of the population right now. Now when we drag that event in, you'll notice there's a set of choices. And I'm, I'm showing them here on the screen. So um, we can specify uh, a couple different options for this event. We can make it a one-time event or we can make it an ongoing event. If it's ongoing, we can say whether or not it has a fixed defined spacing or whether it's stochastic, whether it's uncertain when it occurs over time. It just occurs with a certain mean frequency, some first order delay between the occurrences of it. Um, and then we can set some additional options too that it goes, it only goes off with a certain, um, under a certain condition. So if, if we if drag this event in called report population from the general tab into main, um, we can then set a trigger type. And the two options are rate, or a condition, or excuse me, the three options, or a timeout. This is to specify whether this occurs once, or whether this occurs on an ongoing basis, a cyclic basis with a certain timeout. And uh, if we do say cyclic, we can, we can specify the first time and then how often it occurs, say every 10 time units or every one time unit. So what I'm going to do now is I've just dragged in this, this event into main called report population, okay? And um, I am going to have this event report the population size. Okay. I'm going to have it report the, the size of the population. So um, I've dragged this in. Um, it's a regular event, and it's called report population. I'd like this thing to be a timeout event on a cycle uh, starting at time 0 and a recurrence time of 1. And then I'm going to have it print out the, uh, the size of the population. So um, I'm going to see if I can switch Neil over here just so that he can, um, he can see this, uh, this in any logic exactly how I do this. There's supposed to be a way to do this more generally, but it hasn't been helpful. OK, so here we go. Um, Neil, you should see this in, in just a minute here. Um, so here's my 
Here's my main class, and I've dragged the event over. I'm going to click on Report Population. It's a timeout, a cyclic, first occurrence time, zero over occurrence time, one. And I'm going to do a trace LN. You know, population size is colon, and I will say population dot. I think it's dot size. Um, I, I forget if it's dot length or dot size, and it's uh, it's a happy camper. So um, so what I've just done is inserted associated with the action for that event and the handler for that event, as I call it, the um, uh, a, a, a bit of code associated with printing out the population size. Okay, so what do we expect to see if we run this model? What's going to be different? Yeah, exactly. So it's going to be it's going to re be reporting the population size every time unit. So if we run this thing, what we should see is a is a console window that gets updated with the population size. Uh, periodically. You note the console window is not associated with with uh, that, but it's instead it's associated instead with the um, with the uh, within any logics um, main interface in the console tab next to properties by default. Okay, I think somehow Neil Neil lost that um, that window there. So anyway, that's an example of an event. In that case, it's it's particularly uh, simplistic event. We're going to come back and see how we can collect data on the population later. Um, now, uh, right, I think, I think we'll leave, uh, leave that one um, like that. I can make it more interesting, but um, in the interest of time, I think we'll move on. So Neil, I'm going to put you back on the slides here and um, see if we can, we can again get you seeing those. Okay, so. Um, right, there we go. Okay. okay, so um, now what we're going to do is, so that was a very simple implicit event that's used for reporting. Uh, events are extremely helpful for, for reporting, but they can be used for many other things as well. Um, just a couple of subtleties with this event. Um, uh, as we talked about last time, rates are not often are not automatically recalculated. So, um, while there's some cases where there's automatic updates of things, like if you have a, an event which depends on the value of a stock and flow model in Venson or in any logic rather, it will take care of recomputing the uh, the event rates and so on. But you can also explicitly request that they be uh, recalculated by calling on changed on the um, on the event. You can also reset an event to disable it. If you want to disable an event so that it no longer occurs, we can simply um, do so by calling um, calling reset. Maybe we'll show that um, by example here within this model. So uh, what I'll do is I will put here in main, I think we will uh, drag on a bit of text. So if we go over, so I've got main open, and I'm going to go over to, um, to the presentation area, and I'm going to draw on, uh, well, I'm going to drag in, instead of from presentation, I think I'll drag in a control. This is just going to be a bit of a, of a future sort of lead-in, but if you go down to the control area, you can drag in a button, and this button will say uh, toggle toggle reporting. Okay, um, I'll I'll just I'll just make it stop reporting. That will make it easier. Stop reporting, and I'm going to make it the label of it be stop reporting. Okay, and the action of this is going to be report population dot reset okay so in this case it will basically call this event and say hey stop reporting so what I've done is I've dragged in a button 
from the control area to main and I clicked on that button and done in general and I, I put in action that says the name of the event dot reset. I've, I've just built the model to see if it's working by using this build button up here and I'm going to run this simulation again. So, so now what we should see is once again a situation where there's reporting going on initially but if I if I press that button the reporting stops. So here we've we've set up a situation where we've used the um, the reset functionality and then you could call restart if you want to restart the event. So events can be started and stopped programmatically. So any questions on events before I go on to talk about dynamic events? Events are one of the core pieces of vocabulary you'll use to build your models. They're just very, very useful for building up uh, a model where certain actions take place on a regular basis. Um, at a global level for reporting, at an individual level, there might be an event associated with um, advancement in education or an event associated with a birthday or an event associated with um, some other sort of periodic life change. So any question about events? Events are, like most things in any logic, you can have at the global level, at the individual level, and in nested levels, anywhere in, every, anywhere in between. Any questions? Okay, I'm gonna talk now about dynamic events. Okay, so uh, dynamic events are like static events, except that a dynamic event is associated with an action to invoke when it occurs. So, and, and you can have many copies of it. So a dynamic event actually can represent many particular, particular events at runtime. In the same way that a class could be associated with many particular um, instances. Like a person class can be associated with many particular persons when the simulation is running. A dynamic event that you define can be Reified can be turned into many particular events while the simulation is running. And each of those events will have one action to undertake in its life. And after undertaking that action, it will die. By contrast, the static event has a single associated schedule, but uh, a dynamic event can have many, many instances, each of which has their own time to go off. Okay? Um, so each instance can be scheduled at different times. They all undertake the same action when they get done, but they can be provided with contextual information. Um, the general type of the action is the same, but specific information about exactly how it's done will differ. Um, and the schedule for each different instance will proceed in parallel. And then the instances will differ, disappear after they go off. It's sort of a one-shot event. Okay, so the idea here is with Kaven, just as with a class, we parameterize it. So when we have a class, each instance of that class might be a person, and each person might have a different age, a different sex, a different level of education, etc. associated with it. We call that parameterizing <coughs> that class. With a dynamic event, we use the same basic strategy. It's associated with some information that allows it to do a very particular job, some contextual information. And that information is defined when the event first comes into, into, into existence, and it remembers that information until the job is done. And at the time it goes off, it uses that information to do its job. And the issue here is frequently we want to schedule an action ahead of time. We want an action to be triggered down the road at a known time from now, a known amount of time from now. And we want to remember some information to do that job then. For example, maybe at the beginning of the year, we know how many people will be born in the year. And we know each of their characteristics. Maybe we know there's 20 people with this sex and this age, and 30 people with that sex and that age. And what we do at the beginning of the year is pre-schedule their births to occur at random times during the year. 
And so to do that, if we had 20 people with sex A and age A, you know, and, and, and an associated age and, and 30 people with this other sex and other age, we create 50, we create the instances of the same dynamic event. And that dynamic event would remember the sex and age with which to create them, and it will go off on, on their birthday sometime during the year. Okay, so here we define the dynamic events at design time. We tell them what parameters, what information they need to remember to do their job. And then when we create them, they're given that information they do they need, and then sometime off they'll in the future, as as we specify, they'll do their job. Okay? So how do we how do we set a dynamic event? Well, what we do is from the palette we drag this thing called dynamic event. And you'll notice that for the dynamic event, there's a set of parameters to be specified down here. So we'll specify for this dynamic event, hey, you have to, to create an instance of this dynamic event. To create an event to be scheduled of this sort, you have to provide these parameters. So an example of this would be, suppose we had deers in our model in the chronic wasting disease model, and the deers mate at some point. And we want to schedule the birth of the fawn that will result from that mating some point in the future. So the deers are going to mate, and the characteristics of the fawn will be known, we'll decide what the characteristics of the fawn are at that time. A fawn is a baby deer, for those not familiar with that. So Suppose there are these, there's these two deer that meet up, a male and a female deer, during rut, during the fall, and they conceive of a fawn, and that fawn won't be born until the spring. But we know, at the time of the mating, we'll decide, okay, what's the genotype of the fawn going to be, what's, what is its mother and father, what is, um, whether it's going to have a certain disease uh, passed on through the mother, etc. these characteristics. So we'll create this dynamic event, and we'll pre-schedule that birth of the fawn for six months from now. And so the birth of the fawn will be scheduled, and we'd have parameters which specify what, what the characteristics of that fawn will be. And then when the fawn is to be born in the spring, the action will be undertaken, and that action will depend on these parameters typically. In this case, it might be add a baby into the model, a baby deer into the model with these characteristics. And boom, it will get added to the model, just like that. And, and the baby would, be, would remember who its mother and father are and all those sort of things. And the event that went to create it would disappear. Okay, so here, here's an example of this. Here's scheduled deer birth, and the parameters here are whether the deer to be born as female, what the genotype, what's the latitude and longitude at which it was conceived, or whatever other information. And then there'll be a, an action which adds that, that fawn to the population. What I want to emphasize here, folks, and this is really important, is that this information, these parameters to be specified, are provided when the event, the dynamic event gets created. The instance of this dynamic event gets created. That's when these parameters are specified. And that instance will sit around for however long that baby deer is in gestation, however long the mother is pregnant, until sometime later, sometime in the spring, the baby, it'll come time for the baby to be born, the fawn to be born. And at that point, the action will be executed. So it's remembered all this information. Those of you from computer science background, may have been comfortable with the notion of a closure before. How, is, how many people have heard of a closure here? Okay, oh, my heart goes out to you folks. Um, closures are one of the most beautiful things you can see. Um, you should go learn about them. Maybe you should, I should have a tutorial on closures. But a closure is basically a pairing of an environment on the one hand and and a, a method or, or function, depending on your language, on the other. It pairs some information, some context, with a job to be performed, with an action to be performed. And that action 
will typically make use of the information in the closure. So by, by creating these closures, we can remember the requisite information and we can then perform the action required. So we might create a closure, for example, which we might take an add function, which adds two arbitrary numbers, and we close it with information about what its first argument will be. We curry it. And so then if we, if we do this with the number one as the, the initial argument, then now we'll create an increment function, something that adds one to everything that's provided to it. We've, we've created that information in a closure. It has all the information it needs to do its job later. So here, we've created a sort of closure of sorts. We've created this dynamic event that's just waiting to happen. It has all the information it needs provided when it's created to do its job. Finally, in the spring, when the sun is shining and it's warming up and the winter has passed, the baby will be born you'll be added to the population and the dynamic event will disappear. It will, it will disappear. Yes, go. Yep. Okay, so it's it's a good question. Let's let's um uh, I'm going to um just try dragging one of these in. Um into my uh, model here, and uh, I think I will see if I could switch Neil over to um, to any logic to see this. So the deal is, when you add one of these to your model, um, what you're going to do is to um, is to is to specify when it gets scheduled for, how far from now. It's it's scheduled for okay. Um, so I think I have a uh, an example of this. Let me let me just see if I have a pre pre canned example. Looks like I don't. Um, what I will do is see if I can drag one in here. Okay. So there's um, my dynamic event, um, and uh, you know this could be scheduled dear. Um, scheduled to your birth and this provides the various sorts of information about it but the answer is I'm going to show here in the any logic help for this what the syntax is because it's not going to provide me with the exact syntax but dynamic event here and uh, okay this is the, uh, the detailed information on it okay so um, this is, this is the uh, syntax you use, uh, Dylan. You'll see this um, create under bar my dynamic event. So um, if we have the scheduled dear birth um, and perhaps we want, this is in main, so maybe in the startup code, we would do create scheduled, oops, create under bar scheduled dear birth dear birth and and we can we could compile it now okay so method um, okay yes it needs it needs a time from now this specifies the number of time units from now that we want that event to go off okay so this schedule dear birth needs to provide all the requisite information um, to uh, to do its job and the, the key piece of information that you're asking about is the timeout, but then there's a set of parameters that must be provided, okay? So in other words, when I create this event using create under bar, the name of the dynamic event, I tell it when do you want, when should it be scheduled, some amount of time from now, and I tell it all the information it needs to do its job, to be packed away in those parameters. Namely, for in this case, it's this information. Um, this information is specified by the uh, by the parameters, which in this case happens to be. Uh, I didn't put anything in, but you know, I could put is female, is female, and make it boolean, right? 
And if I did this, now it's going to mean, hey, you've got to provide, when you, when you create an instance of this, you've got to tell it whether or not it's female. And I could do random true with 0.5 probability it's true, 0.5 probability it's false. So at this, at this point, when the model starts up, it's going to schedule a deer birth within the model. Um, so this, there's going to be a, a birth scheduled 0.5 days from now. So this random true thing here is providing the parameter that's required for this to be created. And once created, that thing will just be waiting to go off at the, at the specified time. Does that make sense? Any other questions about this? Dynamic events. It's, it's notable that I could create a hundred of these. So folks, I mean just just drawing on this, um, uh, you know, in the in this main here in the startup code, I could create, you know, um, you know, a hundred a hundred different uh, deer to be born, and I could create them to be to be scattered uh, through the next year from, um, uh, you know over a 365 day period, um, they're, they're going to be scattered through the year. There's going to be deer of random sex that's scattered through the year. So here, there's going to be various deer born at various points in the year, a hundred of them scattered through the year. And maybe when the deer is born, I will say, you know, um, a deer, a deer has been born um, is it has been born at time um, time okay um, and so now if I run this model I will have deer popping up well deer being told that they're born um, all throughout the model operation so here we have the model running and the infection is spreading and you'll notice you notice that here's the first two deer the first two joyous events have occurred here, and then here's two more, for example. They, they're just being scattered through the um, through the uh, timing of the year um, in a in a in a random fashion. So here we have deer whose births are being rescheduled, are being scheduled up front at the very beginning of the simulation, but their births aren't occurring until later in the simulation. But they have all the information they need to be born. Um, so in short, they have their information on what sex they are, right? Um, so uh, here they, they know what sex they are. Um, and in fact, I could say, um, you know, this deer is a, and I think I said what, is, is, is female, um, is female, uh, so if is female is true, it's going to say female. Otherwise, it's going to say male. Okay. So so now if I run this again, what we should see is deer of various sexes. Whoa, uh, various sexes being born here. Um, cannot convert to it from a string to a boolean. Okay. Let's see what's going on here. Um, oh. Uh, okay. So. So. Is that going to sort of precedence issue? Um, yes, good. Okay. So, so here we have these deer being born with uh, with characteristics that that indicate whether or not they're they're female or male. So, in this case, okay. So here we have a male deer being born at that time, and. Soon, though, there's a female born, and then two males are born shortly thereafter. They are being born with characteristics that were set when. When was the characteristic of this one being a female set, ladies and gentlemen? It was set at what time? When the event was created, which in this case was at the startup code for the model. It was <coughs> associated with 
let me let me stop this. Um, uh, it was at the startup code for the whole model. So this is an example simultaneously handling an implicit event starting up of the model, and we wrote a bit of code that goes through and adds a hundred deer to be born at these times with characteristics set now, but to be realized in terms of an action, in this case of printing out a message, um, when it occurs. Does that make sense to people? Okay, questions on that? Dynamic events, or it's an interesting concept to wrap your head around. I should emphasize that Dynamic events is kind of a strange name for it because the regular types of events are dynamic also. They occur over time. It's just that this is dynamic in the sense that it can turn into many instances at runtime. And in, in computer science, we often refer to that as sort of a dynamic quantity. It's, it turns into many particular instances. Okay, so any, any questions about that? Okay, I'm going to go back now and I'm going to see if I can bring back uh, Neil to the um, to the uh, PowerPoint here. Okay. Um, okay. Right. There we go. Oh. Okay. Um, okay. So we've we've seen how we can specify dynamic uh, events, and we gave two instances of these things. Um, uh, one thing is to schedule a. a Sort of a birth, uh, you know, at the time of conception, and others the beginning of the year. Distribute immigrants, for example, through the year, or distribute births through the year. Okay. Um, so if we have a known cone of immigrants that we know have to come into the model for a given year from historic data, perhaps no. In 1995, there were this many immigrants into Saskatoon. We don't know the dates at which they immigrated. We might distribute them might say, okay, the beginning of the year, we'll distribute them randomly through the year, and then they'll get born at the appropriate times of the year. We'll set all the characteristics at the beginning of the year, and they'll simply get born through the year. Okay, um, so here we can add in an arbitrary number of events, schedule them at, at runtime. Okay, any questions about events before we go on to networks now? Okay, I'm going to go now on to... Um, the second phase, which is, is, is networks. And I'm going to stop this.